So again, that's where our patient started, and she, these are the finals. It's always fun to see the transition on our patient from before and after. A particular patient came to me uh, requesting an improvement to her smile. She's worked in dentistry for a while, and if we look a little bit closer, uh, when we think about what an aesthetic smile is, it typically would be a smile that follows the lower lip line. And if we uh, certainly factor the entire patient's face, their smile, the lip line is super important, right? The lip line, it frames the teeth behind it. But with aesthetic cases, really all restorative cases, there is a lot of confusion out there. Because whenever, maybe if you've had a case like this in the past, you have to kind of decide you make that decision of what material to use. There's a huge array of materials out there. And usually you have to kind of decide in the aesthetic zone, are you gonna choose strength or aesthetics? And with all of the different brands, all of the different names, all of the different terminology of what materials to use, it can be extremely confusing. It could be like this guy, which way do I go? What do I choose? And that's the response you're, you're wanting. You want the patient to, to love it. You want them to, again, if you have that conversation, they bring that proposed design to you. You want them to be excited about it. If they're not, you're probably going down the wrong path to, to misery. Certainly not all patients are the same, but getting them, especially if they're coming to you looking for that aesthetic improvement, it's always so beneficial to preview it let them see it, but also to let us see it. Now from that mock-up, I also love using it for the preparation. So you saw that formula of removing anything too facial, removing anything too incisally. Once you've removed and pre-contoured those areas that are too far in those dimensions, incisally and facially, then when you choose a prep burr, and I would recommend a round-ended tapered diamond, a round-ended diamond burr to create depth cuts. So I like doing these depth cuts, these vertical depth cuts. There are depth cut burrs that look like a Christmas tree with different uh, thicknesses and, and, and depth that you can create, and they would go across horizontally. Now here we're, sometimes you do have to cut off the temporaries depending on how locked on they are and any areas where there's the resin, residue, I like using a, a slow speed carbide round burr to kind of take that off. It will remove the acrylic without really affecting or damaging the uh, tooth structure beneath. So once the restorations come back, I like using a, a mylar strip or, or shim stock to make sure that it has a, a good contact between each. You want to ensure that each of these fit perfectly down on each prep passively, because with these veneers, if there's any slight heavy contact, it will throw off the alignment. So using a shim stock is going to help determine whether or not the contacts are heavy. If it, if it tears when you pull it through, definitely try to adjust the contact down. I don't know if you saw that, but I, used a, I cut a small piece of articulating paper in the areas where the shim stock was too heavy, where it wouldn't drag through. So once we etch with phosphoric acid, rinse them off, I do apply Gluma again, a desensitizer, let that soak, don't wash it off, then a bonding agent. In this case, I use OptiBond Universal from Kerr, and then Kerr's NX3, their light cured resin cement. So you can see I put, I start at the centrals when I'm cementing them. I lock each one on. Again, it's important during the try-in to make sure that they fit passively. So this way, when I go to cement them, I can get them down to that ideal position. And because of the unlimited working time with it being a light cured cement, I take my time, make sure I load each restoration correctly, seat them all the way back, canines now on the premolars. Once everything's down, then I use these wooden sticks. I think they're orange wood sticks. And so these were in uh, Bruxer Aesthetic. Again, that's where our patients started. And she, these are the finals. It's always fun to see the transition on our patient from before and after.
Are you enjoying this instructional video? I hope so. If you'd like to receive additional clinical instruction with AGD and ADA approved CE credits, all at no charge, be sure to visit glidewelldental.com forward slash education, where in addition to over 60 on-demand clinical courses, you can also access our weekly webinars along with other valuable content.